Hi everyone, welcome to Creating with Martelli. And my name is Lisa Gifford and I do have Miss Linda here. She is moderating for us today. Say hello, Linda. Hi everyone. Do we, we got, got some people watching? people watching? We got 23 people watching, yay. All right, as always, be sure to like, comment, and share this post to all of your friends and see if they would like to be a part of learning how to make today the stuff it bag. <laughs> This is our this is our bean bag template, right? I think I got it right. Yeah, this is the bean bag small. We have two sizes: the bean bag small. We got the bean bag large. I'll show you the bean bag large in a minute. Um, I just lost my total train of thought on this, but I loved it because it was like for stuffing things in it. If you see right here, I've got a version of it that really looks like a bean, uh, like a, um, a beach ball that you would see. And it's stuffed with things that kids might put in here, like blankets or pillows. And I've showed a, I'm showing a version here where you can put some straps on it. So we have full written instructions. Uh, I do have a full video tutorial that I have done on the large one. So you can actually see that. I think it might be in this page, also on YouTube, and it is created with Martelli. It is the bean bag large. So I'm going to do a couple little things different with this one. I do have full written instructions that come with both of them. It talks about how much fabric you need for the small and how much you need for the large. But I'm going to do a different twist than what's in the written instructions on the zipper. As some of you may know or have heard, I am not a big fan of zippers. I just don't like them, and if I can avoid doing them, I can. I need to really take some good classes on some different zippers and different ways they do. Linda, <laughs> <laughs> somebody needs to teach me some more on zippers. But um, I, I am going to show you not the version that I have in my written instructions. I'm going to show you a different way that I have found that I'm doing this zipper, and I actually like this one a little bit better than what I did here, even though this was a good technique. There are lots of different ways that you might do zippers, and I, I challenge you just do whatever you feel comfortable with. If you're not liking the instructions that's on here, just go ahead and show, do the way that you would like to do it. Um, I am going to show you these straps right here. I'll talk about them a little bit when we get to that point, and maybe how to make these little um, tabs right here that I've got little D-rings on. This is so you can add straps to it. Now, I don't have them in the pattern. I don't have them written into the pattern. My basic thing was to just show you how to make this, this, bean, this uh, bean bag. We call it a bean bag, but it's more like a beach ball, but the bean bag's small. I'm showing you how to make this, how you take it and use it and run with it. That's what all about, that's what's all about creativity. How you might want to add a single strap on here so it's easier to carry. How you might want to add the strap sewed in or do what I have done, make a little tab and put like some hardware like these are the D-rings. How to make straps and of course the straps are going to be dependent on, you know, if you need to have one that has a slide so it's adjustable. I've just done simple straps. Now, this one here is just a swivel and it is a um, is a one inch right here. So knowing that I'm dealing with one inches, I got to times that by four for me to make my four, my strap here. So I cut a four inch strip of fabric, folded, 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 and then uh, pressed it, put a stitch down it, covered up my raw edges, and then I looped it in here to make my strap. And I did one on both sides. The D-ring, same thing. If the D-ring is three quarter inches, I had to times it by four. So it gave me a three inch strip, folded it, folded it, folded it, sewed it, made a little strip, and then just sewed it into the edge of the hexagon. So just one of those really, it's so simple to do. Uh, one of the things I wish I would have done when I did the large one, I'm going to show you the large one now, is I wish I would have put a big strap on it. Because if the kids are going to take this big one and they're going to fill it with their stuffed animals and their blankets and their pillows, and they want to tote it around the house, you know, because it's a nice comfy area to sit, have a nice hand on here. Put a put you know put a short strap on it so they could grab it and pull it and or lift it and whatever you want to do. So that would be something that would be really good for this one. So this one here is just one version. This one's just filled with polyfill. Now it used to be filled with ten pounds, but we've been <laughs> we, 
We don't have so much polyfill anymore, do we, Linda? We've been stealing. We, we've been stealing it for, let's see, the dolls, the bears, you know, this smaller, you know, so we've been you just stealing it, steal it, steal it. But you know, Lisa, I kind of like mm -hmm. it not as full because I think it would be more comfy. <laughs> yeah, it probably is yeah. more comfy. Here's a couple more versions, a, a couple more that I have done. And um, when I'm put in instructions for the large one, I'm going to re reference that right now. Uh, you needed a zipper, and I want to see how big that. It was a big zipper. It was a 30-inch nylon or sewable zipper, and that's what I have right here, a big sewable zipper. These here are the, um, they have two, two pulls on them. Of course, it's caught, hung up on the edge right here. So this is one of those double, I think it's like a bag zipper. But if you go to Joann's, I've seen these robe zippers. They're like 32, 33, 35 inches long. So they're robe zippers, but they're sewable. You can trim them down, and they don't have this double pull on them, and they're, they're really nice. So they're really good for projects like this. And I want to say that they're, they're number fives. Uh, here is another version that I've done showing a different colorway. Just so many different ways that you could do this. Again, this one has a double zipper. My very first one, I don't know if I can lift it because it's heavier because it's full of heavier things. But uh, I didn't have a big zipper when I made this one, but I did have two shorter zippers. So I put in two shorter zippers and kind of butted them up so I could get you know this long zipper going all the way across. So that's, that is all of these. That's what started this. And we had it for um, last summer. We had it when he had the kids up here and they were doing, um, making their own reading pillows. And we had made that and had filled it full of stuff and they were laying on it and having a good time relaxing on it. And that was the whole purpose. I had designed the big one as an idea to help organize the kids' room, throw their stuffed animals in, their blankets, their pillows put them all in one spot and then it becomes a useful item in the room so they can lounge on it. <clears throat> the smaller one just came about because we thought this would be a great idea for kids to, if you put a couple straps on it, they can throw their bathing suit in it, they can throw their little stuffed animal, little pillow, their favorite blanket, you know, some you know, PJs and they could go hang out at grandma's house or they can they can uh, go hang out with some friends house or they just throw whatever they want in it and then just by adding a couple straps just kind of makes it fun by putting the two straps on it makes it more like a uh, a backpack type situation but you could put it on again i'm not a big i am not a big sewer i'm learning more about craft sewing um i'm more projects but this is i don't know how to make backpack straps or how to assemble those or how to put them on but this is what i knew so again, take what you know and apply it to other projects. See what you can do with it. All right, so going back to the written instructions, there are two uh, templates. You have the large and you have the small. So this one is the small set. So I'm not even quite sure how big this, this one is. So I'm assuming it's probably about 20, 21 inches or 24 inches around, I believe. That's this one right here. So that's the small. With this template set, you get the hexagon, the fussy cut window. So if you really wanted to dress up what's at the end of your beach ball, then you would be, or the bean bag, you would be able to put something there in the middle of it. Say if you embroidered something and you wanted that to be in the center of that hexagon, that would be something right there while we have the really good fussy cut window. And then we got the large template right here, the, this piece right here. What's unique about this one is, is that you're double folding your fabric. So we have a little bit smaller template, easier for you to store. So double fold your fabric and then you're able to make the blades. So this one's the small one. Then we have, and it also comes with the pattern for the small. And then we got the large one, which is the exact same thing. Three pieces, big hexagon, and the bigger template. Again, you're double folding your fabric. Um, what are some other things that you're going to need? So if you're doing the small one, literally you can do each one of these blades, all a different color, was done with a fat eighth. So basically it's just a little strip of fabric um, this big. What is this? Well, how, much, how big is an eighth, Linda? Uh, it's um, so ah, 18, it's nine. It's nine, nine by 22, nine by 22. So I had six nine by 22s. And then I just needed, you know, just a couple scraps of fabric to make my uh, hexagons with on each end. So I just had six fat eighths to, to make this. Uh, so generally, if you look at here, it's three quarter yards of fabric 
or uh, a three fat quarters or three different colors will give you a good vari variation in color. And then about an eighth of a yard because you've got to cut out two of the hexagons. And if you're going to do the strap, uh, I just did four inch pieces with the fabric and cut out two of them and then it just had a little scrap to make my little tabs. So it doesn't take much fabric to make the straps too. Now, if you're doing the big girl, the big, the big stuff at bean bag, that one is about th is three yards of fabric because each blade is a half is a half yard. So you're going to need three yards of fabric to do that one total. So um, that one that one takes a little little bit more. So it would be instead of you know half a yard per blade. So that's what you need, and then about another half a yard to get your two big hexagons on the end. And then if you're going to put like a handle or something on that, you'll need some scraps of fabric on that. So. If you, again, like I said, we got the full video that you can go back and reference and watch the video, and it is on uh, our YouTube channel. Now, going back to this one, do we have any questions so far out there? Uh, I'm just, just kind of rambling. Um, they're asking about measurements and how much fabric, and so I'm posting that. And then let um, me grab a tape measure because I really want to know how big this one is around. So bear with me a minute. And Lisa, I don't think we're posting the written directions for this no. in the Quirky Quilters retreat until the day you do the... Yeah, until we do the yeah. day. So I, I'll post the date of when that's going to be uploaded. So I've, always, I've never really took the time to measure this one all the way around. And I've always kind of wondered, how big is this thing all the way around? What is that called? Diameter? Yes. When you go all the way around? So this one is 47 filled and I could probably fill it a little bit more but 47 48 inches all the way around so that's a that that's a nice that's a nice size beach ball <laughs> for this one how big is the other one I don't know so it's a circumference all the way around is 48 inches if I just go from here to here 23 22 20 you know just I don't know what this is called, but that's 23, 24 inches from center of hexagon to the center of the hexagon on the other, 22 and a half. So that's what this one is. So it's a, it's a good size, but it's great, I think, for, this would be a great toy for kids. Uh, you could, um, I don't know, you could fill it with the poly beads. You know, you could make it out of a different fabric. Um, I was thinking about that poly thing. What is that um, stuff that we learned last week about? For can koozies, wouldn't this be cool to oh, yeah. make with like mm. out of that kind of a yeah. fabric and stuff with styrofoam? So it'd be a pool toy. I mean, you could do all kinds of things with this. You don't have to use the zipper if you wanted to just, you know, stitch it closed and fill it with whatever you'd want to fill it in with it. If you wanted to have two pieces, you could have one, one that be a lining that you would stitch close, and then the outer piece. You'd have the main piece that you could stuff with poly beads. And I would use the foam poly beads and then the outer piece where you could put a zipper on for it to be removable so you could wash it, throw it back in the washer, you know, and put it back on. All right, so let's go back. How are we doing so far? I still, I'm jumping around all over the place again. <laughs> Got a lot going on, let me tell you. Today's been a full day. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the small one. And you've got to cut out all of your blades. So that's the first thing that I do is I, I get all the blades cut. And I've got some prep work that I've already done where I've cut them and have sewed them on. So I'm going to show you how I cut out the blades. And I'm just using some batik. So to me, there's no right or no wrong. So I just fold it in half. And then I fold it in half again. So that's my double fold right there. Then my template. If you can see this, it says fold and fold. On the two straight edges is fold and fold. So you're going to set the template on the double fold. Very carefully, get them on that double fold. Right there on it. Again, if they wanted this template to be longer, you can bring it out. If you wanted it to be a bigger piece, then you could easily bring this out. But I'm just going to keep it right here at this size. Got it on the fold. And we're just going to cut and cut. And then you'll have 
You're going to cut till you have all six of them. I'm going to grab the second one. Same thing, I'm just going to fold it in half. Fold it in half again. Reach in here, making sure you don't have any wrinkles up underneath there. I felt one. So smoothing everything out, then grabbing my template. This point right here is going to go right here at this double folds. Cut and cut. And you're going to repeat that for all six, like I said. And then the same thing for doing the hexagons. You're just going to set this on and you're going to cut all the way around on your fabric. Now, the hexagon has these little markers in here. Now, you can use them or not use them. But if you do want to use these little markers, because I do say that I find it easier if you go ahead and mark the dots on your hexagons. And I'm going to talk to you about marking your quarter inch on your blades, too. So when you get it, it's got the get a grip on the back, but these holes are pre-drilled into the plastic, the HDPE, but it's not drilled into here. So I recommend with your scissors or sharp point, just kind of poking through the back side, not from the front, because if you poke through the front, you might push the get a grip off of the template. So you're just going to kind of go from the back side, find that spot, push it through, give it a little twist. So that when you go and cut out your, your pieces, before you even lift it up, say I've got my fabric under here, before I've even, if I've cut one at a time, before I even lift it up, I'm taking my pencil and I am marking my, um, I'm marking my dots. But I've done this so many times, I know exactly where my, where my quarter inch is, so that you know you're going, to, you're going to see that at, at some point when we're sewing them together. All right, so then you're going to need to do that the same on your, um, on these. Now, my recommendation would be if you have one of our little, um, if you have this little gauge right here, it's got a little quarter inch mark right here on it, this little gauge, and just line it up on the edge and then just mark a line. On. I don't know if you have to do it on every side, but another thing is my um, That's my start and stop right here for when I go to sew all the pieces on because I need that opening there So when I am putting on the hexagon, it's almost like you're doing a Y seam, but it's really really easy And I'll show you how we're going to do that um, My machine actually has a little marking on the foot so I know exactly where my quarter inch start and stop is so your machine might have that too so However you want to know where you start and stop, I don't want you sewing all the way off to the edge when you're sewing your pieces. So like these right here, I sew them. I'm starting, I'm going to get on a lighter color so you can see it here. So I'm starting sewing here. Got my two pieces right sides together and I'm sewing all the way down. I do a back tack on each end, but I do leave my, I, I leave it where I stop right here. Because when I have that little bit of an opening right here, if you can see here, as I sew my four blades together, it's not sewed all the way to the end. So that's going to help me when I go to put the hexagon in, like I have done here. So when you get all six of your blades cut and two of your hexagons cut, go ahead and sew four of them together. It's going to be easier. And then put your hexagon on each side. Choose the two blades that you're going to use to put your zipper between. And that's what I have right here. The two blades that I'm going to put my zipper between right here. So I'm going to do this one a little bit different than what I've done before. I'm going to put on the zipper where I sew this onto the zipper like this. I'm going to have it where, let's see, red, orange. So that's going to go here. So I am going to have it where I've got my zipper up and I am going to sew this all the way down onto the other side. And then I'm, trying to, I'm, trying, I'm thinking this through again, Lynn. I'm just okay, got confused. Okay, can I throw you for a loop? Doop, doop, doop. I would cut a blade. Then right, pull it back. Yep. I would cut a blade right in the middle. 
mm -hmm. and put the zipper in the middle. Oh my goodness, she's getting ready to throw me for a loop. <laughs> I mean, how easy would that be? As long as it doesn't mess with the width Who here. cares? It's a quarter of an inch. No right, big let's deal. Try that. You want me to do You're that? You want to do it. that live? No, no, I wouldn't do it live, but that's my, that's what okay, I would I'm be doing. I just lost my train of thought and what I had done. <laughs> and I put my, put my fabric over top of my zipper, I believe, and then I folded it back and pressed it. Then I think I did the same thing with this one and folded it back. I've just lost my train of thought. I believe that's what I did. So I'm using a long zipper here and I'm going to have it go all the way to the edges. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find my center. I'm going to fold my zipper in half and I'm going to put a little divot out here and a divot out on this side. So I notched it out. So there's my center. <clears throat> now when I grab these pieces, I'm going to fold them in half on the one side and I'm going to put a little clip there and then I'm going to do it on the other one. These are the sides I'm going to sew into the zipper. I'm going to put a little clip there. So there's my centers. Because I believe I set this here and I'm going to sew all the, I'm going to sew all the way down. So I'm going to clip this and I'm going to start here on this side, sew, and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew it on the other way. Now I remember how I did it. All right, so let's do this part. Let's get this zipper installed and then we'll go back to how we do the rest of it here. So I've got both of my pieces and my um, zipper. And it's a long one, so this is a sewable zipper, so I'll be trimming it off on the ends. But I don't have to trim that off until the end. So I am putting, matching up my little points here. And I've got my teeth up and I'm putting my piece over top of it. And I'm actually going to put a clip there. And I'm going to hold it in place there. And I'm going to keep this, I've got a zipper foot on. And I'm going to sew all the way down on this one side. I'm starting at the halfway point. Let's get this over to the left of the teeth. I think that's what I want. Here we go. And then I flip it over and I do the other side. Oh, Got to get it past that. Get it past the clip. Here we go. So I'm sewing right up against the edge of the teeth and I'm going to do a little, little back tack here. Start again. And I'm just going to feed it through. I'm right up against the teeth. Take it to all the way to the end. Now I am not worrying about stopping at a quarter of an inch on this one and I'll show you why when we get to that point. I'm just going to go ahead and sew all the way to the edge and back tack. And I'm just going to flip it over and just start the rest of the way, sew it the rest of the way. Laura asked if you're sewing right sides together or wrong sides together. Um, you're doing right sides. Yep, right sides. Right now I'm doing right sides mm -hmm. together. Yeah, because the teeth are up. There, to me, there's no right or wrong with the <laughs> with the, the fatigue. The fatigue, yeah. So yeah, I would say it's right sides together. Now I'm sewing all the way off to the edge. I believe I have to do some clipping when you do this because you got this gradual curve. So I'm going to do a few little clips right here. You're getting a ton of thumbs up and a ton of hearts. 
<laughs> That's all sweet because here I, you know, I don't like zippers. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> I'm sitting here doing, hoping I'm doing it right. Like, just kind of winging it today. <laughs> Lots more oh, coming Lord, your way, Lord. too. I like the idea of cutting the blade in half, though. It's what I should have done. I don't never think about these things. Just drop something. Oh, that would have been my clip. All right, so I guess the best thing is I would probably finger press this or press this back or top stitch it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do a top stitch here at the end. So right now... We're going to repeat what I just did with the yellow. Match up my little notch here as my center. And I'm going to just do what I just did. I'm going to drop my foot down and just sew just like I did on the other side. I'm going to go halfway and then turn around, flip it over, do the other half. And Laura wants to know what stitch length and what needle are you using? What stitch length? Well, I've got it on, I got it on, um, well, two. right now the stitch length is 2.4. It's whatever the setting is for concealed zipper on the M7. And it's on the, you know, where it's at on, under, on the uh, zipper foot. I am using a zipper foot. And you're probably using a universal needle or the, I mean, a universal needle would work for anybody. I know Janome likes Janome needles. Universal needle? I'm using the purple needle. Okay. <laughs> what needle is that? Well, purple needle, those are the ones that G and Sherry introduced yep. to us. All right, so now I'm just flipping this over to the other side. And... Going ahead and just stitching down like we did before. Should line up about the same. Okay. All right, they're all set and good there. I'm going to clip those pieces right there so we have a nice gradual curve here. Are you going to be pressing? Not sure. I'm going to get the iron Thinking going just in case. I can just hold it back, and I don't think I have to do any pressing on this one. I'm just going to do a quick top stitch. Now on the other one, the other way that I described, yeah, I have to do some pressing. This one I'm just going to do a simple little top stitch. I'm going to put it in the center. I'm just going to top stitch this down. I'm just going to hold it apart and just run it down the teeth here. Of course, it would look better if I had some matching thread, but at least y'all can see this thread. All right, coming up to the other side. Okie dokie. Do you feel better? I don't know. We ain't got the hexagon done yet. <laughs> but you got the zipper in. <laughs> All right. So I know I have to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and take this foot off. 
before we move on, I've got to stabilize that zipper because we're going to be clipping it. So I am going to go here at the end and I'm just going to do a couple of stitches across right here at the edge. I've got to stabilize this. This is going to be caught up into the uh, hexagon and I'm able to pivot it even though I've got this zipper here and I don't have that quarter, um, that quarter inch Y seam. It worked. I was just so surprised that it did. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple stitches here. I'm going to slide down my zipper and do a couple stitches on the opposite side too. Got to stabilize it so it doesn't become, it doesn't separate on us. That's basically what I'm doing. I don't want it to separate. <clears throat> so it's easier to do on one side than on the other because the other one you got to pull that zipper back and now you're having to hold it hold it in place to sew over that little spot right there. Okay. So now the zipper will not come out completely, but it's holding it in place. All right, so far, so good. You got some great comments on your zippers. Lots of thumbs up. And Eva said, couldn't you just um, not cut off the zipper, just tuck it in? Um, I think I, when I did this one, I just cut it off at the, at the very end. I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and just cut that off. You could have left it. You could have left it in there. But this is the one I had done before, and I didn't have that gap. And it, it, I was just surprised at how well it worked. Um, and now where you're going to put, if you're going to put straps and tabs on it, now would be a good time to get your tabs made because we're so close to being at the end. When you sew all of your pieces together, I recommend you go ahead and get these done and get your partially sewed hexagon done bone on both sides. What I mean by partially done is that you're going to sew partially on your one, on your outer blade. Go ahead and pivot and do all the way around to the other side and then get to the halfway point on this one. Because the next step is after you, then you go to do your zipper part, then you're going to sew the zipper part into here and then you're going to go ahead and finish putting on the last of the hexagon. So now would be a good time if you wanted to have your tabs to be going in here, you could have already had your tabs placed in any other point of this. But I thought the tabs worked better closest to the um, closest to wherever the zipper part is going to be. I think if I would have had the tabs on the other side and the zipper on the bottom, things might fall out. <laughs> <laughs> so that the tabs need to be closest to where the zipper is. Um, I could have actually taken the tabs and put them right here where the zipper is. It's just it would be harder to see because you're dealing with sewing that little angle right there when you're putting in the hexagon. So does that, does that make sense? So I just put it right there as close to it as I could get. How are we doing? We're good. Any questions? Everybody good so far? Nope. They're just not understanding why you hate zippers so much because you did a great <laughs> job. I just don't know. <laughs> I, I must have had a bad experience as a kid. <laughs> we'll just call it that. Okay. So I have this hexagon already done, almost done. So now we're going to do this one. And then we're going to go to adding the zipper part on it. So is, there, is everybody good? Do they need me explaining? Um, I think, the, I think they've you know, got the grommets it. grommets or anything? I'm mean, not grommets, but the, the tabs, tabs and the D-rings and all that. Everybody's probably got that, right? I, there are great videos out there that show um, tabs and, D -rings you know, adding and, the D-rings and that kind of thing. So. Well, you know, I have so many of these D-rings and swivel hooks because, you know, I was going to do some necessary clutch balls that haven't gotten around <laughs> to doing those yet either, but I have all the hardware now. Oh, goodness sakes. So I'm going to set this one aside. So Darla liked my idea of putting the zipper in the center of the blade because it would work really well for putting your tabs and the handles there. Yep. Next one yeah. I'm doing, I'm cutting mm -hmm. a blade right down the middle. I think that's a great idea. I really, I really like that. And I think that even though you're going to be losing some of 
the zipper is going to take away whatever you would have lost in a seam allowance of sewing that blade back together. Yeah. So that that's one of the reasons why this worked out so well because the zipper, um, even though I'm losing the seam allowance here, it's still it's keeping everything that I need for it to be to be able to fit the hexagon going all the way around. So it, it just worked out better than I expected. So it's always always good when something good works out well. All right, so the next step is, you know, adding the hexagon. So you're going to sew these right sides together. And I usually, I start on one end. So whichever color, for me, it's this red one. And I am matching up the point here. This little point is going to be matching up right here. And I'm going to start sewing, not at the edge, but I'm going to come in about an inch and I'm going to start sewing at about right here. I'm not going to be starting here. I'm starting off here because I still have to feed the uh, the other two blades in. So this is where I go sew for the four blades with the hexagon part starting. So I'm going ahead and lining up my points. I'm going to go ahead and get my machine set up to the quarter inch. And I'm going to start sewing about right here, about one inch in. And I'm going to do a back tack and then just start sewing. So I'm sewing to where I get to this dot here and I'm getting to this place where I had stopped sewing. I'm getting my needle to drop down right there before I do my pivot. My needle's going to drop down right here before I do my pivot. And I pivot from underneath. So I just kind of grab the hexagon and just pull it around. You'll see it really goes together very, very quickly. So I'm just lining up my edges and seeing that the seam where I had stopped on the blades is lining up right there on the dot that I had put onto the hexagon. And I'm just going to sew right there to that point. I'm sewing to where I had stopped. And I'm going to have my needle just drop down right there. Now I want to go ahead and make sure my foot raises. And now my needle's down, foot is up, and I'm just grabbing my hexagon that's underneath, and I'm just pulling it over and lining it up. At the same time, I've got my fabric in my hand for my next blade, and I'm just lining it up, matching up the edges now on it. It just all smooths out right here. Needle drops down, go another stitch. So now when I sew now, I'm sewing right along the edge a quarter of an inch or so, and I'm coming right down here. Again, I'm going to stop right there where my stitch stopped a quarter inch from the edge of the blade that I had when I had sewed those two pieces together. So I'm going to sew right there to that stitch line. And I'm going to let my needle just drop down right there at that stitch. So same thing, kind of have these gathered in my hand, reaching underneath, feeling for my um, hexagon, and I just pivot it around. Feet is up, needle down, doing the same thing, just lining up my edges just as before and start sewing. It just, it just smooths itself out. As I set this down on the edge of my hexagon, the fabric here on the end of my blade, I see again where I'm getting ready to start and stop. It's going to be right here. I see where my stitch is en ends and I'm going to be sewing right there to that stitch. and let the needle just stop right there at that stitch. Last part, again, I'm reaching underneath, pulling my hexagon forward, line it up against the edge. Now this one, I'm not gonna sew all the way to the dot. I'm just gonna get sew within one inch of the edge. So I'm gonna stop one inch because we still have to put the other two blades in. So we're just gonna go forward to our about an inch away and back tack. See how well it just all matches up right there. So does that all make sense? Everybody see that? Look how pretty that stitches. How how it just 
looks so pretty right there at the points. Every single one just comes out so nicely. Okay, so now we're going to get this piece that we've done. So I'm kind of getting it into the orientation that I like it to be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So I know I'm going to be sewing the red to the orange and I'm going to be sewing right sides together. So I've done that. You know, I mixed it up once, had to rip out my stitches. So I got this as red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So I've got my red touching my orange and my yellow is going to be touching the green. So all we're doing right now is just sewing the blades on just like you would have done for the first four. So you're going to have your start and your stop. So you're going to still consider that you've got that little quarter inch area that you needed to not sew. You're going to leave that open because you still got to feed in the rest of the hexagon. So I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to go ahead and mark it. I thought I had marked it on here, but I guess it's on the other side. So I'm going to just mark that spot right there. So I know that's where my start and stop is. On my foot, I know where the quarter inch is from the needle on here. So I'm just going to drop it. And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch away, do a little back tack right here, and stop a quarter of an inch from the other end. that one done. And now we're going to go ahead and get the green sewed together. I'm not worried about having to leave the zipper open yet because we can still, it's still open on the ends. And just like we did the other, leave that little bit of a quarter of an inch on the edge. Right up to the end. Okay. So now be a good time to open up your zipper a little bit. So now we're going to just close in the last two pieces. So we're going to we're start right here on that green and yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and just start finishing to close this in on this side and then close in on the other side and we will be completely done. This goes together so quickly. it in. So now you're going to see that you are actually going to be stopping. Um, I'm trying to explain, explain that. Or right, I'm going to take this out so you can see it. When you go to do this part right here, the actual 
point of the hexagon is going to pretty much fall right there in the middle of the teeth. Right here, you're going to see it on this side. So in the middle of the zipper, right there at the teeth. So this point is going to fall right into there and then you're going to pivot and then you're just going to finish it off. So I was just surprised at how well it went together even with having the, uh, the teeth on there. I mean, with, the, how, without, with having the, um, the zipper done where it goes all the way to the end. I didn't think it would work out this way, but it, it does very well. So I'm just going ahead and pivot. And I'm seeing that it's going to line up right there at that center. And then I just pivot again. It's a little fiddly, but it works really well. Coming up to that end of stitch. Now I've just got this last little inch to sew right here on between the orange and the red. Repeat that for the other side. And just like before, it's going to line up right there in the center of the teeth. Now this one's a little bit flimsier. Just line up your edges when you do your pivot. You're going to see it's going to come in right there at the point of the hexagon. It's going to be right there at the point of the, or the center of the teeth of the zipper. Pivot. Line up your edges. Go ahead and continue sewing. pivot for that last little bit inch that you didn't get sewed down. Back tack. I'm not going to un I'm not going to clip those right now. We're going to go back to cutting station. All you got to do open up the zipper the rest of the way. much better than the way I first did it. <laughs> okay, so I like zippers a little bit more. <laughs> that was fun. Oh my goodness. All right. So what I would probably do before I'd go to trim those off on the inside, I would probably sew over that just a little bit more just to give it a little bit more strength and stability right there. I probably would do it on both sides before I'd go and trim that off. So yeah, what do y'all think? How'd we do? Yeah, they're loving it. Lots of hearts and, and thumbs up. <laughs> would you maybe serge the edges inside to that clean it? That would be a great idea. Yeah, I would take that bit. to the serge. You could take easily take this inside and you could, you could serge all these. If you wanted to uh, hide all that, absolutely. You could actually hide all that you know, surge all this and, you know, because these are raw edges that are all in here, but I made this as a, you know, just a beanbag type of a thing. Um, on the big one, I have you doing a half inch seam allowance and yeah, go in there and surge all that too. It would just make it just a little bit more finished. Now somebody needs to figure out how to make this so that you've got an outer piece and a lining and then it'd be, you know, 
one big bag and you wouldn't see <laughs> any of the raw edges on the inside. But anyway, I think that's it. Any questions at all? Just lots of great comments and thumbs up. <laughs> it's been a long day. So y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. This one was an absolute lot of fun. It's very dear to my heart. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>